Cappy 724, right? Center maintain 2000. Center maintain 2074. Okay, we're going to start up the Citation Mustang here. We're going to see that starting up this airplane is as easy as it gets. So with the push of the starter button, as soon as the starter turns over, we take throttle out of cutoff and watch and make sure there's no exceedances. Here we go. So we've got the right engine started, throttles come out of cutoff, we've got ignition, light off, positive fuel flow, and there's N1 rotation. There's nothing else to do. So there's the left starter, we've got positive rotation, the throttles come out of cutoff, we're looking for fuel flow, which we've got down here, ignition, then light off, and I um, want you to make sure we don't have any temperature exceedances and that we've got positive N1 rotation, which is uh, occurring there on the left hand side. So taxi in the Mustang is a piece of cake, generally speaking you just keep the throttles at just about the idle position, and the airplane, as you can see, can roll without having to put too much thrust ahead. Steering is uh, accomplished with nose wheel steering through the rudder pedals and uh, differential braking when needed. What's nice about the Mustang is that it can turn on a dime. And we're confirmed on the correct runway, runway 35 right. Once we're lined up, all we do is simply advance power to full. Don't need to worry about how far we go. We just go straight to the takeoff detent. Nice and smooth. The engines spool up very quickly. And we've got takeoff power set. We've got airspeeds alive. That's one, two, three indications. And we're at V1, rotate, and positive rate, and landing gear is coming up. And the Mustang at uh, V2 plus 10 is when the flaps come up. Traffic, traffic. And the flaps are up, landing gear is up, and uh, we're come climbing out nicely out of this uh, 6,000 foot airport. One of the, the big benefits with the Mustang is uh, engine management. There is no engine management. It's, it's easier to operate these engines than, than what you're going to find in a high-performance single-engine piston like a Cirrus or, or Corvallis or uh, Mirage or even a single-engine turboprop. Systems management in general is non-existent when uh, in flying the Mustang. Over here is our, our fuel. Right now we've got about 1,800 pounds of fuel on board. Uh, the Mustang can technically hold uh, just about 2,500 pounds of fuel legally. Um, but it can squeeze a little bit more in depending on temperature. So if you go to top it off on a cold day, you will, you'll be surprised to, don't be surprised if you see 2,800 or 2,900 pounds of fuel, uh, which really gives you some additional range that uh, uh, you may not have been planning on, which is a nice, nice safety benefit. Over here in the primary flight display, on the left-hand side we've got our um, indicated airspeed, and just above that's the barber pole. Barber pole right now is showing 250 knots as our maximum speed. On the right-hand side we've got our altitude of 19,000 feet. That's our actual altitude, and above that is our selected altitude of, of uh, flight level 190, to be correct. On the right-hand side of that is the vertical speed indicator, and of course the uh, HSI here, which is showing the Magenta GPS track, which is taking us to uh, the, the Pueblo VOR. Down, down here we've got the, uh, the FMS keypad, which uh, makes entering flight plans really quite simple. By simply typing in the identifier of the airport or the way, waypoint that we're traveling to, we can quickly navigate through the uh, multi-function display flight plan page to get us to where we need to get to. Let's take a look at the multi-function display and some of the information that's available to us. So this is our primary page. As we scroll through, we go to the traffic page. There's no traffic showing up now. We've got dual sources of weather information. We've got XM weather coming from the satellite, and then of course the uh, analog uh, weather radar that's on the nose of the airplane. After, after the weather page, we've got the uh, weather data link. And this is going to give us the XM weather that we were just talking about momentary moments ago. So if we take a look here. We zoom out. We've got all sorts of fancy, uh, fancy weather for us to, to use for our, our flight planning purposes. We come over here to the charts. All the approach plates for the airport, be it departure procedures, arrivals, approach plates, and of course, the weather is all available by just a bunch of a few clicks. This is where we spend most of our time in the Mustang. So the, the Mustang really is an all-weather airplane. The airplane comes standard with. Uh, de-ice boots on the wings and on the tail. The engines are protected using an engine anti-ice uh, bleed air. Uh, the pitot-static and the angle of attack probe are both electrically heated. Uh, 
there's very little systems monitoring that you need to do when you use the anti system. Uh, all you need to do is turn, take the uh, wing stab switch, you just turn it to auto, and it cycles between uh, the tail, the top of the wing, and the bottom of the wing in, um, in a set sequence that's all controlled by the, the, uh, the ice computer. It's really hard to screw up. There aren't a lot of things you can do wrong with the anti system on the bus. One of the things I really like about the Mustang cockpit design is the, the yoke. While something so simple as the yoke, they did a really good job of designing it. One, the yoke goes through the, the panel, it doesn't go through the floor, so there's lots of leg space here. You can cross your feet, you can stick your foot through the rudder pedal. On a long flight, you can sit your seat all the way back, put the seat back, relax. The yoke is very ergonomic, it's got a nice little yoke clip here. Uh, on the switches here are pretty useful items. you got a transponder ID button right here. you have got a control wheel steering button here. Autopilot disconnect. Push to talk underneath the, uh, the trigger finger. And of course, your electronic pitch trim. Let's say it's a very versatile airplane. Now with a max gross weight of 8,645 pounds, you can more or less load the airplane up with full gas and put four people on board giving you the capability to, to utilize the Mustang's maximum range, which is approximately 1,100 miles. Uh, if you're into the wind, it's going to be a little bit less. If you've got a tailwind, you can benefit from that and go a little bit further. But for a regional airplane, uh, you're more or less non-stop to anywhere within a region, particularly in the, uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, in Europe, it's even better. You know, the countries are so closer together in Europe that the Mustang's operational uh, uh, versatility really, really does come into play. The airplane also has speed brakes. Speed brakes are controlled through a little trigger on the throttle. You pull back on uh, either side of the throttle. So if you're in the co-pilot seat, you have access to the trigger. If you're in the pilot seat, you have access to the trigger. So if I pull it back, the airplane slows very quickly. With the capability to put the landing gear out at 250 knots indicated airspeed, maximum uh, VLO and VLE, uh, it is never an issue to get the Mustang slowed down. So a combination of the landing gear coming out at the same speed as the maximum speed of the airplane of 250 knots indicated, being able to use the speed brakes and uh, pull the power back to idle without any worries of shock cooling or some of the other stuff you experience in, in bigger uh, piston engines. Uh, the airplane to come down quickly is never an issue. I've found uh, uh, flying some other citations that don't have a uh, safe taxi, you know, to find yourself around uh, airports, particularly high density aircraft at airports at night, and to ha have this, it's, it, it's, you know, it's the best. Okay, so we're shooting the ILS into uh, Centennial Field now. On uh, ILS runway 35 right, we've got the uh, little Mustang icon here showing up the ge geosynchronized approach plate with our actual position, which is really helpful for situational awareness. Right now we're flying on the autopilot, but with the flight director giving us guidance on what's happening, and uh, we're in the soup. We expect to see the ground here shortly as we pop through. I hope you enjoyed your tour of the Citation Mustang. If you have any questions, give us a call at Jet Aviva. We enjoy talking about these airplanes as much as we do flying them. Thanks and have a great day.